What's up YouTube? Today we're doing the ultimate welding hood showdown. No sponsors, no bullshit. Okay YouTube, my name's Lloyd and I am your angry Asian fabricator. Who the fuck am I to tell you what type of welding hood to buy? Well, a little background about me. I've been welding for about eight years now, uh, the last five of which professionally. I got into welding more as a hobby because I wanted to learn how to weld up like Jeep bumpers and mostly Jeep 4x4 stuff and kind of went from a hobby into basically a career. Uh, the primary forms of welding I do are uh, MIG and TIG, steel, stainless and aluminum, but I do know how to stick weld as well. This video today is to inform you to make a good choice on which welding hood to buy because they can go from not too bad, pretty cheap for like a Miller entry level welding hood to super fucking expensive like this Aesop Sentinel. So you can go anywhere from $100 to $400 plus depending on what your needs are. Each of the hoods I'm showing you today I've used for at least two years with the exception being the entry level Miller. And under those two years, I've done primarily MIG and TIG welding, steel, stainless, and aluminum. Uh, as far as MIG, aluminum, that's with running a push-pull gun. Uh, pretty dirty process, but it's better than a spool gun, I will say. I am a AWS certified welder and a Weibo certified welder. Uh, for those of you not in the Pacific Northwest, that's the Washington building and uh, occupation. Whatever. Ever, what the fuck ever, man. It's just, I've been welding for a while. I enjoy welding. It's in my blood. I knew it the first time I struck up an arc. And let's go over the different types of welding hoods I have. And hopefully this will help you make an informed choice. So to start here, we've got the Miller Classic Series Auto Darkening Hood. This is your entry level auto darkening welding hood, helmet, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think... No matter if you are somebody who is just getting into welding or you are an experienced welder, everyone should have a helmet like this at their disposal. For a backup, number one, but primarily number two is that if you ever have friends or anybody, or anyone helping you out, they're not welders, they don't have a welding hood, it's always nice to have a second one for that person who's helping you out. Or if somebody just wants to watch you weld, uh, it's going to be kind of hard without a nice shaded lens covering their eyes unless you want to make them go blind. So I recommend, again, uh, no matter your experience level, to get yourself a nice little entry level helmet. It's not going to be your daily go-to whatever on the job helmet, but it is a great little backup to have. This particular guy here, these are really robust guys. I will not tell you that they are the most comfortable helmets or they're packed full of the most features or anything like that. But I work with a dude who has been using this thing for like five years and we're talking about 40 to 60 hour weeks day after day doing nothing but just changing out his lenses and the battery and I mean he's a kick ass welder and he does great with it. So. Uh, me, I'm a man convenience, so I do like to have a couple extra creature comforts. But this is your basic, 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 you know, entry level auto darkening helmet. The Classic Series has got a inch and a half by four inch viewing window. Screens are pretty easy to pop out. You just kind of pop this guy, pry him open. Come on, you don't make a liar out of me. two sensitivity zones on this guy. So what that means is that the more zones you have, the more likely that the sensors are gonna pick up that light while welding. So for certain things, if you are in constricted, constricted spaces, uh, having to look through, like if you're welding something under this table and you're having to look through these holes, the more zones you have, the better. 
It's got a few adjustments here. You got the knobs on the side. They do stick out a little further, so you might be prone to hanging these up if you're in tight spaces. Headband is a nice one-piece one, so that's really easy to replace. Uh, it's got your clock style adjustment back here to fit your big head or small head, depending on who you are, and as well as a little height adjustment. So yeah, even though this is an inexpensive hood, it does have the headgear that comes with it isn't bad. It's not great by any means, and it's not one of the easiest ones if you like to flip your hood up and down. This one's got your pretty basic control set that you'll see on a lot of entry-level welding hoods. Uh, the dial style adjustments here for your shade and sensitivity. It's got a shade setting of 8 through 12. The delay is a simple slow and fast, and what delay is is um, after you're done welding, how soon uh, does the auto darkening turn off? So if you want it to come on faster, so you can kind of you know move along faster. If you're welding uh, a bunch of different joints in sequence, you can keep it to a fast delay versus slow. Uh, it's just something that adjusts how soon the auto darkening turns off after your last weld. It does have a nice little low battery light indicator up there in the corner with the reset. Uh, lenses are easily serviceable, easy to replace, and the battery on this guy, it actually takes two AAA batteries, which is nice because, again, if you're using this as a backup hood, AAA batteries are going to be a hell of a lot easier to find than those uh, thin disc style, CR style batteries. So, just under about a four by an inch and a half viewing window on it but honestly pretty damn good hood um, again I think if you're just getting into welding or whatever you know if you don't want to spend a whole lot I've seen these guys go for about a hundred to a hundred thirty bucks um, sometimes there's specials on these guys that's how I got this particular one I never actually even went to buy it I actually got it with my Miller welder as part of a little package deal but yes, uh, great little well, great little helmet to start out with. Lincoln makes a variant that's pretty close to it that I believe has a grind mode. I think it has a huge knob on it. But otherwise, very similar features. Uh, same price again, around maybe a hundred bucks or so. Um, I would take these over, say, like the fifty dollar Harbor Freight helmet. So if you're going to go that route and you want a good name brand, one of these guys will definitely do what you need it to do. Next on the chopping block is the Miller Digital Performance. Truth is, this is my first welding hood I ever purchased many years ago. Uh, at the time, I think I paid a little around 200 plus ish ish. And I see that they want about 300 bucks nowadays for it. Is it worth $300? Hmm. This guy's a pretty solid upgrade from the Miller Classic. It's got a little bigger viewing area by about a half inch higher. It's got a couple more sensitivity zones on here three versus the two on the classic I like the design of this part here where the front cover pops off you just push these little but buttons in on the top and that gives you access to your lens and gasket as well as pulling out the entire uh, auto darkening system it's pretty easy to pop this little control unit out of here. Just pull down the tabs and slightly lift off. Easy to get to. And the batteries are very simple, right on the bottom of there. And it takes two, which kind of sucks actually. One of the things I didn't like about it are the little flat CR2450 batteries. I don't really think that this thing should have to take two of these guys. I think one should be sufficient. Uh, considering what I've seen other hoods get away with with one battery so just something to keep in mind with that another thing I didn't really much like about it knobs very similar a little more maybe refined but that doesn't really make a difference the headgear is nicer than that of the classic has a swivel on the back here a couple more height adjustment points single band so easy replacement as you see this one's been replaced and the controls are digital 
And they're digital in the sense that it gives you like a little old school style LCD screen here. Shades go from 8 through 13. You can lighten and darken it just by pushing these buttons here. You can adjust the delay easy on there and the sensitivity. This hood also has a cut and grind mode. And what that allows you to do is in the cut mode, your shade now goes down to five. So now you have the option of going from five to eight, which is pretty nice. So this hood really even goes down to three on the grind mode. So this hood really has quite the spectrum of shades on here. I prefer to rock a shade 11. Um, shade 10 is kind of like your, your default starting platform, but for me, I tend to get sunspots with a 10, so I rock the 11. But it is nice to have these options. Uh, sometimes if you're having obstructed welding, you might need to have the shade a little lower, or if you do, uh, if you're cutting um, using a plasma cutter or a torch or even a grinder, uh, that is kind of a nice option to have. Me personally, I don't ever really cut or grind with a welding hood. Uh, I prefer cutting. Um, just using shaded lenses, honestly. I like to be able to see as much as I can when I'm doing things regarding a, a cutting torch. But yeah, this has been a pretty solid hood. But I will tell you what I fucking hate about it, and the reason I replaced it is that it never wants to stay on my fucking head. I even ended up replacing the headgear on this guy, which cost me about 30 bucks. That shit lasted like six months before this fucking thing kept falling on my face all over again. Falling on my face, falling on my face, falling on my face. It gets pretty fucking annoying. Uh, and it's also a huge pet peeve of mine when it comes to welding hoods. The solution is don't go and buy another headgear like I did. Because that's just a waste of fucking money. What you want to do invest in a little o-ring if you're not sure what size on the right side of this hood take off that knob and voila there's your o-ring and what you end up doing now is you double up on these o-rings and it will stay on your dome better that way However, it will not release all that easily. So if you're one of the guys who tends to flick your hood down often, that could be annoying to you. Personally, I'm more of a pull it over my face with my hand kind of guy, but there are times where it's nice to be able to just flick it on your hood. But again, this particular guy at the $300 price point, I don't know if I'd recommend it. I think that's way too much. I think Miller's getting a little too proud of their name. At $200, it's not a bad hood, but at $300, hell no. Next up, kids, is the Vulcan Arc Safe, or as I like to call it, the Bastard Child version of the Lincoln Viking. This is a Harbor Freight hood. This is also a fucking excellent hood for the money. I think I got this guy on a coupon. I know Harbor Freight doesn't really do their coupons anymore, but I think they still maybe do some of their Vulcan branded coupons, and Vulcan is their in-house welding brand, which has been honestly kicking ass the last few years. They've been putting out some pretty decent equipment, whether it's welding hood or machines. I've been very, very impressed with what you get for the money. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into details on how this is the bastard child of bastard child version of the Lincoln Viking because there's already videos that do that. But I will tell you that it is 90% the same as a Lincoln Viking 3350 hood. So much so that the front lens is interchangeable, the headgear is also interchangeable, and the dimensions of the auto darkening control panel are almost the same. I can't... Actually, I take that back. They are the same because I have actually taken the Lincoln Viking control unit and snapped it into place. And it does work. 
The biggest difference between this and the Viking is that the viewing area is a little bit smaller. This guy has got a 3 by 4 inch viewing area, which is huge compared to the previous Miller model as I described. The classic at an inch and a half, so twice the twice the vertical area and oh, about an inch over the classic, or I'm sorry, the digital series. This is an awesome hood, honestly. If you're looking to get a hood, whether you're an entry-level welder, student welder, you've been in the game, I honestly can't say enough good things about this guy for the money. I won't tell you it's perfect, and I will tell you what I don't like about it, but it is a really good fucking helmet. This has got the older style analog control dial knobs on here. You have sensitivity that goes from shade, I'm sorry, the shade that goes from 9 to 13 on this particular guy. And it also has a grind mode. So you hit that and then your spectrum goes now from 5 to 8. A little battery indicator, test light. Delay sensitivity, really, really good hood for the money. Pops out pretty easy. Slide these little guys over, pop them open. Boom, glass comes out, or lens comes out real easy here. You can just take that gasket off. and Just pull the whole thing off, take the gasket off, put a new one, slap it in. Again, the Lincoln Viking one will, 3350, will work on this. Again, the viewing area is not the same as the Lincoln. It's a little smaller, so these lenses, you, can't, you don't want to use the Lincoln ones. But if you have to replace any of the other parts on this guy, no problem. Just go and get Lincoln parts for it. Battery on this guy, you pull this little panel apart here to get to the auto darkening part of it. And the battery is right here on the bottom. And it takes a single CR2450, which I like. This hood does damn near everything that the Miller Digital One Performance One will do with a single battery, aside from having the LCD screen. Not really a deal breaker. In fact, I like these analog controls better because they stay put. They don't reset. You know, if your battery dies, they don't magically calibrate themselves back to, you know, zero. They stay where you want. And for a lot of times, once you've got your hood dialed in where you like it, you don't really touch it that many times. So it's nice to be able to come back to this guy and have the same setting every single time. So, what don't I like about this guy? Well, one thing, I don't like headgear that has the foam, whatever, that wraps around. I like it when it's just a single piece just because it's easier to replace. These things get fucking nasty as you can see. It's so much easier to just get a whatever generic brand piece of foam and put it on there then you have to get something that's got all these extra straps and velcro and shit just to fit on this thing. So I do wish that this was kind of a simplified version that only had the one piece. I think I mentioned, if I didn't mention, it's got one, two, three, four sensitivity zones on there. The reason I actually ended up replacing this helmet is that I thought there was something wrong with it. I was getting flashed often. Um, replacing the battery didn't help. What I did end up doing was opening this up, taking a Q-tip, basically cleaning those sensitivity zones, and it's been pretty damn good ever since. So maybe that was the issue I was having, but after getting flashed about a half a dozen times, that shit gets, gets pretty old. So from there, I decided to upgrade. So here's my upgrade, the Aesop Sentinel. Mine probably looks a bit different than a lot of the ones you've seen out there. Uh, I have the clear lens on there instead of the amber, and mine is wrapped to kind of look like the Master Chief helmet, Spartan helmet from Halo. Because I figured, fuck it, it looked cool. I got it off of eBay for pretty cheap. I won't tell you that it fit very well. But thankfully, I got a friend who's really good at doing vinyl decals, so I let him do it for me. 
Anyways, to the hood itself. This is a very, very popular hood. Everyone seems to love it. But me. I want to love this hood. I bought it when these things went for about $300 new. They now go for about $400 new. At $400, I cannot recommend this hood. I would rather tell you to go and buy two Harbor Freight Vulcans instead. And here's why. This hood is nice, but this huge lens is just a real fucking waste, honestly. All it does is get scratched up. At a two and a half by four inch viewing area window, it's not a bad size window, but considering I can go and get a Harbor Freight hood for half the price that gives me better viewing area, they should have done better. It's got four sensitivity zones on here, and just like the Vulcan, I was having issues with this hood flashing me. It turns out, I believe, that the particular piece I was welding, um, it's this chromoly metal design. It's got all these slots in it. And I think welding through some of those slots, or looking through some of those slots while welding was kind of fucking with the sensors so they weren't all engaging. Same problems as replacing the battery wasn't having any luck with that um, and then I did the same thing I ended up cleaning up the sensors and so far so good but talking about this lens you know you usually see these with the amber lens the amber lens is nice um, these do pop off there's a push it right here on this side and it'll come right open here and this is a really fucking cool looking hood I mean you will be the coolest kid on the block when you rock this thing or you can be the biggest nerd on the fucking block like I am when you rock it like this, right? It's fucking Halo shit. But this is just a bunch of wasted plastic. And because it sticks out so far from the viewing glass, it's more prone to getting hit with sparks, hit with fumes, gases. This thing gets way dirtier faster than any of the other hoods I have. The other problem I have with it is when you lie it down. What I like about hoods with, say, a lip on the front of it, here, so you can see that when you lie it down, it's not going to scratch up your screen. It's not going to scratch up that front lens. I lay my head like this down all the time to try to keep this from getting all dirty, my headgear from dirty. You don't have that option on the ESOP side. You have to lay it down like this all the time. If you do this, it roly polies. It'll roly poly right off your table. Ask me how I know. The headgear is pretty good on this one. It definitely has uh, the most options and complexity of any of the other headgear of the other welding hoods I've shown you. It's got three head adjustments, back, top, and forehead. Um, single piece of head headgear foam again I like that easy to replace you can even actually move this headgear forward and backward which is nice because I had to do that because when I weld aluminum and sometimes stainless I often wear a respirator and getting a respirator to fit I use one of those Miller uh, over your face ones made to go under a hood I had to actually adjust this helmet so that it would fit but that was nice it had that feature the controls on this are actually touchscreen. Ooh, fancy. Hit the button to turn on and you can see it's all cool, nice lit. Touchscreen modes on there. Uh, it's supposed to auto come on, like when it's on your head and you come, you uh, put it down. I found that, or even if you grab it after it's been inactive, I find that feature to be, I don't know, doesn't always work. Shades are adjustable on this guy from 9 to 13 to 5 to 9 because this also has a cut and grind mode on there. This has a memory too which is nice because we were talking about that issue with the battery that even on this one particular model uh, if the battery goes out usually your memory settings are saved. One of my favorite features is this low is the battery indicator level on here 
which is right up here. So it actually kind of tells you, instead of just like a stupid light, what your battery's looking like. Removal of this is kind of like the Lincoln Viking or the Vulcan. You've got these plastic guys that slide out and then the whole thing comes apart. Now, I'm not gonna take this whole thing apart because this guy has got an external grind button, which I guess if you grind in your hood, it's cool. I never grind in a hood, as I said before, I just don't. I don't like to have all that shit on my face. I like to be able to see as much as I can. Not to say I don't wear a face shield, but I'll pick up a face shield before a welding hood to grind any day of the week. As far as worrying about hitting this thing, you usually have to double hit it, double tap it to activate it, so that's not a big concern. The knobs are nice on this guy, nice and big. Again, going back to the touchscreen features, it's kind of cool, honestly kind of gimmicky. I don't think they're really required. I don't think this gives you anything really over having analog knobs or dials on there. Another thing I don't like about the Sentinel is because it has touchscreen controls, it doesn't work with gloves. I mean, you can hit the display button to at least see what you got going on, but you either gotta use your bare fingers or you know something like latex gloves or gloves that are touch sensitive. And the reason I didn't take this thing apart is that because of that grind button on the outside, it is connected, as you can see, to the entire auto darkening unit. So battery replacement actually isn't that bad. You just pop this guy off. And this uses two of the CR2450s. So again, you gotta be rocking two batteries with this guy. I will say that I think that battery life on this is very good. Uh, I think it's better than my Lincoln that uses two batteries even though it's a little more sophisticated and uses clearly more juice. But the pet peeve, I have this hood just like my my other Miller, sorry if I said Lincoln, I meant Miller earlier, is that the fucking thing never stays on my head. And I'm not going through the trouble of replacing the headgear for a $400 helmet, which for that price should be super awesome out of the box. But the fact that I have to constantly adjust this thing to stay upright because just the up and down motion of uh, putting the hood up and down your head, your face, loosens up this guy so I am tightening this all the fucking time in the screen again it just gets too scratched easy I find of all the hoods the messiest process I use is MIG welding aluminum with a push-pull gun I, I run it with a argon helium bottle it leaves some nasty residue behind all my screens get basically just ruin me from the stuff. But this guy gets ruined faster. And the screens are about like, I think they're like four to five dollars a piece. Maybe you can get them a little cheaper if you buy them in bulk. I think they sell in packs of five. But it does fucking look awesome, man. Don't get me wrong. But at four hundred dollars, man, I just cannot recommend it. Again, just it's a good helmet, don't get me wrong. But it ain't a $400 helmet as far as I'm concerned. Okay, YouTube, that about wraps things up over here. I'm not going to say that this is a showdown of the best welding hood because number one, best is subjective. And number two, I haven't tried every hood. I haven't tried every brand. I already hear people saying, well, what about a 3M Speedlass? Or what about an Optro? Or what? Dude. I can only tell you my experience, which is primarily these four hoods, other than some really cheapy hoods, um, or using like the old school like paddle, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about there, it's just basically a piece of shaded glass a, on a fucking paddle that you hold with one hand and weld with the other. Um, but again, starting, we got the Miller Classic, which runs for about 100, 125 bucks. The Vulcan Arc Safe which is also basically the Lincoln Viking 3350 and the Vulcan runs around 150 ish the Miller digital performance which runs about 300 bucks and the Esob Sentinel which is supposed to be the king of hoods at about four hundred dollars um, as I said before out of these hoods 
I think my favorite for the money is going to be the Vulcan. And if I wasn't going to buy a Vulcan, I'd probably buy a Lincoln because I really do like this hood. I think it's an excellent hood for the money. Um, if you want to spend a couple hundred dollars more for the Lincoln name and a little bigger viewing area, go for it. But this hood for the money, about 150 bucks. I mean, you can buy two of these and still have some money left over for welding tools or consumables compared to some of those three, four, five hundred plus dollar hoods out there. So that's just my honest review. I'm sure there's a lot of hate out there. I don't give a shit. That's just my opinion as a welder, a professional welder who's been doing it 40 to 60 hours a week for the last few years. And again, my main processes have been MIG and TIG, steel, stainless, aluminum. I think that the Sentinel is an awesome hood for TIG welding primarily because of the fact that if you keep that screen clean on there, it is a really, really nice hood, real crisp, clear, clean arc on it. But again, for the money, I'm going to go with the Vulcan all day long, and that might sound silly to you, but I would trust my eyes to it. So that's my review. Like, subscribe, put your hatred in the comments. I love to argue on the Internet, and we'll catch you next time.